the U.S. government has been accelerating its new Cold War on both Russia and China. And I've done many videos and reports at multipolarista.com showing how the U.S. government is spreading these fake news stories claiming that Russia is supposedly minutes away from invading Ukraine. I have several videos about that, about how this is part of the new Cold War that the U.S. is waging on Russia. And it's all about preventing Europe from having from integrating with Russia and also China. And of course, when the U.S. is waging this new Cold War on Russia, at the back of the mind of Washington, of Uncle Sam, there is always the so-called threat and scare quotes of China. Because Russia and China have become key allies. They're political allies, they're economic allies, and they're also, in some ways, military allies. President Vladimir Putin said that China and Russia are developing military technology together. They're doing military exercises together along with Iran. So all of the U.S. strategy right now in terms of foreign policy, when it comes to Ukraine, when it comes to Taiwan, when it comes to Europe, Germany with the Nord Stream 2 pipeline that Washington is trying to, trying to prevent from opening and trying to destroy, all of this strategy is about preventing Europe and the rest of the world from integrating with both China and Russia as a Eurasian bloc that poses an alternative to the U.S.-led dictatorship, the hegemonic unipolar order established by the U.S. empire, and especially since the overthrow of the Soviet Union. And in order to wage this new Cold War, the United States has created a series of institutions and alliances. It has the AUKUS alliance with Australia, the U.K., and the U.S., A-U-K-U-S, AUKUS, which is a U.S.-led military alliance against China, in which the U.S. and Britain are going to give nuclear-powered nuclear submarines to Australia, which is an extremely provocative act against China, given that all of the countries in the world that have nuclear-powered submarines also have nuclear weapons. But Australia does not have nuclear weapons. So this is basically threatening China by saying that Australia may soon have nuclear weapons. So there's AUKUS, and there's also another U.S.-led alliance against China called the Quad. What is the Quad? The Quad consists of four countries, hence Quad, and that can, that it's the United States, which is the leader, Japan, Australia, and India. And this is an attempt to create an, a, a so-called Pacific alliance, or so-called Indo-Pacific, as the U.S. says, against China. This is an alliance for the new Cold War on China, and the Quad just had a meeting in Australia to discuss new ways to turn up the heat on Beijing. Here's an article I published at multipolarista.com titled, U.S. Convenes Anti-China Quad Alliance. Beijing calls it, quote, tool for containment and siege. Here is a photo of the foreign ministers of India. Well, the foreign minister of India, the prime minister of Australia, the foreign minister of Japan, and then U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, all meeting together in Australia to discuss ways to wage the new Cold War on China. I'm going to summarize the main point, points of this meeting. Now, the official name for the Quad is the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, or Quad for short. On February 11th, they met in Melbourne in Australia. China responded to them with a powerful statement from the foreign ministry referring to the Quad as, quote, a tool for containing and besieging China to maintain U.S. hegemony. And Beijing accused the alliance of seeking, quote, to stoke confrontation with a, quote, antiquated Cold War mentality. And I point out that the timing of this gathering, of this meeting, was not a coincidence. It came right in the middle of the Beijing Winter Olympics. So this was a message from the U.S. government to China right in the middle of the Beijing Winter Olympics saying that we are trying to build an alliance to wage war against you, China. And of course, the Western governments and also the Indian government are waging a diplomatic boycott against China during the Winter Olympics, even though China pointed out that, that these Western diplomats were not actually invited to the Olympics. But the U.S. and Australia and India, three of the members of the Quad,
have a diplomatic boycott of the Winter Olympics. And then they had this meeting of the Quad during the Winter Olympics, which is a very clear sign of aggression against China. And here's an article in the British newspaper, The Financial Times, one of the most highly respected newspapers in Britain, openly admitting that the U.S. is waging a new Cold War in an article titled Beijing Winter Olympics, the new front line in the U.S.-China Cold War. So we are talking about a new Cold War. This is I'm not up for debate. The U.S. is waging a new Cold War in China. If you don't believe, if you don't believe me, I mean, all you have to do is look at mainstream media. They're admitting it. So get with the program at this point. We are there is a new Cold War happening, and like it or not, unfortunately, it's happening. And of course, we should oppose it. When I said like it or not, we shouldn't like it. It's bad, but it's happening, and we we can't put our be ostriches with our heads under the sand and pretend like it's not happening. And the Quad is part of this part of the alliances that Washington Washington is trying to make to wage the new Cold War on China. Here is a tweet of Anthony Blinken in Australia. And they, of course, use this meeting to escalate the new Cold War on China. So Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who is a right-winger, he's from the Liberal Party, which is a right-wing party in Australia. Prime Minister Scott Morrison attended this meeting of the Quad, which was very important because normally the Quad consists of meetings of the foreign ministers of the US, Australia, Japan, and India. This was the fourth meeting of the foreign ministers of the Quad, but Scott Morrison, the Australian prime minister, joined, and Scott Morrison has made his entire career as a politician about demonizing China. He is aggressively pushing anti-China rhetoric, anti-China propaganda, fear-mongering about China's supposed uh, over uh, supposed uh, too large influence in Australia. They claim that China has too much influence in Australia, and he's fear-mongering about that domestically. So the fact that he came to this meeting is yet another sign of the Quad being an anti-China alliance. And then in a press conference that was held before the Quad meeting, Morrison framed the Quad as an alliance supporting so-called freedom which, as I'll talk about, is, is hilariously absurd, considering the authoritarian regimes in India and Japan, and also, by the way, the U.S. and Australia, which are not democracies in any way. But he claimed that the Quad is trying to protect a, quote, world order that favors freedom, and particularly he, here in a free and open Indo-Pacific. So he kept, kept stressing, emphasizing this idea of freedom, 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 which of course is propaganda that he's juxtaposing against China, which is supposedly authoritarian. Here's a tweet of the foreign minister of India, S. Jai Shankar, thanking Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison for meeting with the Quad. And then U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said in the press conference of the Quad members, he said that they all, quote, share concerns that in recent years, China has been acting more repressively at home and more aggressively in the region and indeed potentially beyond. So propaganda showing that making it clear that this is an anti-China alliance. Blinken referred to it as four democracies coming together, which is hilarious because none of them really is a democracy, but especially India and Japan are definitely not democracies. I mean, obviously the US and Australia aren't either, but they definitely are not democracies. And Prime Minister Morrison continued with this propaganda claiming that it consists of, quote, great democracies, great liberal democracies. But I point out in this article that neither Blinken nor Morrison mentioned that Japan is essentially a one-party state that has been ruled by the right-wing liberal democratic party with few exceptions since 1955. So basically since 1955, with a very few exceptions, Japan has been a one-party state ruled by a U.S.-backed right-wing party. Meanwhile, India is governed by a far-right Hindu nationalist extremist party called the BJP, which, is, which has been dismantling the secular state, attacking democracy, and 
attacking the rights of religious minorities. Both of these countries are authoritarian, but of course, the US government and Australia claim to be democracies themselves as well as they're committing genocide against indigenous peoples, as they're overseeing mass incarceration. So none of these countries is a democracy, but it shows this tactic. The US is trying to create alliances of so-called democracies to wage cold war on China. So after this meeting, the four countries released a joint statement. And it's clear that the United States, the US government, was responsible for writing a lot of this joint statement between the US, Australia, Japan, and India. Again, they, they talk about the free and open Indo-Pacific using all this propaganda, free from coercion, trying to portray China supposedly as authoritarian. And they talk about the so-called rules-based system. And the statement also used the phrase rules-based three times, which reflects an attempt by Washington to create an entire new international legal framework that Washington controls in order to isolate China and Russia to rewrite international law. And of course, when the US says the rules-based international order, they mean a system in which the US makes the rules and orders people around. Now, some people pointed out that this joint statement from the Quad did not actually name China. That is true. But everyone knows, obviously, they're referring to China indirectly. They don't need to name China. Everyone in the world knows. That's how diplomacy works. Sometimes diplomats don't officially name things openly, but we all know what they're referring to. And in the statement, they also condemned North Korea, the DPRK, and Myanmar. So we all know what they're doing. We all know what the Quad is. It's a US-led alliance for a new Cold War on China. And Beijing is very clear about that. On the same day of the meeting on February 11th, China's foreign ministry spokesperson, Xiao Lijian, had in a press conference said, quote, China believes that the so-called Quad Group, cobbled together by the US, Japan, India, and Australia, is essentially a tool for containing and besieging China to maintain US hegemony. Bing! Correct. Correcto. Absolutely correct. And Xiao also said that the Quad, quote, aims to stoke confrontation and undermine international solidarity and cooperation. And, he, and then the Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson added, quote, I want to stress that is the Cold War, that the Cold War is long over. The attempt to forge a so-called alliance to contain China wins no support and leads nowhere. He said, countries should abandon the antiquated Cold War mentality, correct the wrong, abroc, blo wrong approach of block confrontation in geopolitical games and contribute to peace and stability in the Asia Pacific. So note, note how he, he refers to the antiquated Cold War mentality. This is a clear message from the top one of the top Chinese diplomats saying very clearly that the U.S. is waging a Cold War and that China doesn't want that Cold War. It's a one-sided Cold War that was started by the U.S. and the Western imperialist powers, and it's being waged against China, against its will. They don't want the Cold War. In, a pre in the press conference, you have a so journalist the, here. Uh, U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, Here's the, I'll play said it. on Friday that China had been acting more aggressively, uh, both at home and in the region. But he added that he didn't consider a conflict in the Indo-Pacific uh, region as inevitable. Uh, does the foreign ministry have a conference? In this region and beyond, speaking of being aggressive, the United States is second to none. So a very powerful statement. A journalist asking to respond to Anthony Blinken's comment that, quote, China has been acting more repressively at home and more aggressively in the region. And Beijing responds claiming, quote, speaking of being aggressive in the region and beyond, the United States is second to none. Of course, it's the U.S. that has waged war in the Pacific. It's the U.S. that also waged war in Southeast Asia, bombing Vietnam, bombing Cambodia, bombing Laos. It's the U.S. that is being aggressive in the Pacific region, sending warships through. Britain is sending warships through. 
other Western imperialist powers are sending warships through the South China Sea and also through the Taiwan Strait. So as they point out, it's the U.S. and its allies that are being aggressive in the region, not China. Now, there's one final little detail about this meeting that is interesting, and it shows that while the Quad is totally on board with waging the new Cold War on China, they're not all on board with waging war on Russia, which shows weaknesses within this U.S. attempt to create a broad front for the new Cold War on China. Now, Global Times, which is a newspaper owned by the Communist Party of China's official organ, People's Daily, it responds to this meeting of the Quad with an article titled, quote, U.S. ropes in Quad allies to fight two front wars with China and Russia despite spent force. And this is a semi-official Chinese newspaper, and it argued that, quote, the sign is clearer than ever that the U.S. is turning the Quad into a tool to serve its own strategic goal of countering China and Russia simultaneously. And it's true that in the press conference, Antony Blinken mentioned that Ukraine was mentioned in the Quad meeting, even though the, the alliance claims to be focused on the Indo-Pacific. So the fact that they talked about Ukraine, which uh, the last time I looked at a map is in Eastern Europe, very much not in the so-called Indo-Pacific region. The fact that they claim to be about the Indo-Pacific but are talking about Ukraine makes it clear that the Quad is actually not just about the Indo-Pacific. It is a U.S.-led alliance to wage the new Cold War. However, not all of the alliance is totally on board with the new Cold War on Russia. I point out that Australia, like the U.S., I mean, Australia is basically a 52nd state along with apartheid Israel being the 51st. Australia has very little sovereignty. It is basically controlled by the U.S. And Australia has taken a very aggressive line against Russia, obediently following the U.S. line. But Japan and India are more complicated. Japan and, and Russia right now don't have very good relations, but the Japanese government has recently in the past few years trying to, in, trying to improve its relations with, with Russia. Although in 2021, the, it, there was a breakout of a conflict over disputed islands. And also Russia criticized Japan because Japan joined in the United States in threatening Russia over Ukraine. So Right now, Japanese-Russian relations are not great, but they're not as bad as Western-Russian relations. And also, the Indian government, which is horrible. I mean, no one should defend the Indian government. It is a far-right authoritarian regime led by a Hindu nationalist party called the BJP, which is a kind of Hindu fascist party, which is trying to rewrite the Constitution and remove democracy, remove, remove secularism, and turn India into what they call a Hindu Rashtra, which is a Hindu state modeled after like Al Qaeda, like a, a, an extremist theocratic regime. But India also has its own national security prerogatives. It also has its own political and economic interests. And regardless of who is president in India, even though the, the current far right government is horrible, regardless of who is in power in India, India is always going to have to have good relations with Russia because Russia is very close to India. Russia and India have a lot of economic tr trade, a lot of economic relations, financial relations, and military relations going back to the first Cold War. And in fact, in the first Cold War, when India had a much more left-wing government, a socialistic government led by the Indian National Congress, which in the 90s became neoliberal, but before that, it, it was it claimed it claimed fidelity to socialism, and Nehru, one of the founding fathers of India, was a socialist, and they had a history of fighting against imperialism, unlike the current far-right BJP party and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who are puppets of imperialism, who are collaborating with imperialism, but their country still has its own different political and economic interests, and the reality is that they're not enemies of Russia. They still have economic, political, and even military relations with Russia. So we saw this was made this was made clear in the press conference because we saw journalists asked Indian foreign minister S Jai Shankar they asked him in the quad meeting about the conflict in Ukraine and the 
Indian foreign minister refused to respond to the question. He, he repeated, quote, this meeting is focused on the Indo-Pacific. So that was a sign by the Indian government that, again, regardless of how awful the Indian government is, and regardless of the fact that the Indian government is extremely anti-China and is openly working with the U.S. against China, India also still has relations with Russia. So it shows that the U.S. attempt with the Quad to create a broader new Cold War alliance against both China and Russia may not work because India and to a lesser extent Japan still have relations with Russia. So the Quad is first and foremost an alliance to try to contain China. And as Beijing, Beijing says, it's an, it's an alliance to, for containment and siege. But not all of the U.S.'s allies are on board. And we see countries as big as India are saying that they still have positive relations with Russia. So the U.S. new Cold War is already looking to face very complex relations. And while it does have allies on board for the new Cold War on China, they're not all on board for the new Cold War on Russia. And similarly, there are forces in Europe who want the new Cold War on Russia, but don't want the new Cold War on China. Because India sees China as a threat, and India's far-right Hindu nationalist regime tries to scapegoat China constantly, blaming the Chinese communists for all of these internal problems in India that they often are responsible for creating with their neoliberal right-wing capitalist policies. And similarly, in Europe, we see a lot of neoliberal forces and right-wing forces try to scapegoat all their problems and blame Russia. But some of them want to have relations with China because China is the second largest economy in the entire world. And they have so much trade and so many business relations, financial and economic relations with China. So the point is that the U.S. is trying to bring all these countries together to wage a Cold War simultaneously against both China and Russia. And that may not work. It may not work. In Asia, there are countries that have positive relations with Russia and some that also have positive relations with China. And some of them may want to wage a new Cold War on China, but not on Russia. And similarly, in Europe, there are countries that may want to wage the new Cold War on China, but excuse me, new Cold War on Russia, but not the new Cold War on China. So the U.S. is in a difficult situation and it's really the U.S. empire has reached the end of end of the line because the U.S. empire cannot take on China and Russia simultaneously. And there were people, including Henry Kissinger, the war criminal himself, who helped to create the policy of the U.S. allying with China against the Soviet Union in 1971 with his secret visit to China, and then the 1972 Nixon visit to China. There were people like him, people like the right-wing, far-right nationalists like Donald Trump and Steve Bannon, who wanted to ally with Russia against China, and they were not able to because of Russiagate, because of the CIA, because the U.S. national security state is so hell-bent on destabilizing not only China, but also Russia. And that's put the U.S. empire in this untenable position of waging a two-front war against both China and Russia, and even many of its own allies, its own puppets, are not on board for this two-front new Cold War.